President Zelensky has accused NATO of weakness and uncertainty over the reluctance of some members to set a timetable for Ukraine to join the military alliance. NATO leaders meeting in Lithuania have agreed that Ukraine can join, but only when certain conditions are met. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said the alliance had never sent a stronger political and practical message about Ukraine's path to membership, but made clear it could not join while it was at war with Russia. And Europe to catch your Atlas at this report from the summit in Vilnius. Disappointed, Vladimir Zelensky put on a brave face today for supporters in the Lithuanian capital. I came here today believing in partners, in a NATO that does not waste time. Ukraine will make NATO stronger, NATO will make Ukraine safer. A very different tone from his tweet earlier in the day when he blasted the military alliance as absurd and weak for not agreeing a timetable for Kyiv to join the club. As confirmed by NATO Secretary General, the invitation will be issued when conditions are uh, met. This is not the picture of absolute unity NATO was hoping for at its summit, which leaders here know Vladimir Putin is watching closely from Moscow. This is Ukraine today, ravaged by war a year and a half into Russia's full-scale invasion, fighting to keep its independence and defend wider European security, it says. Arriving in Vilnius for the NATO summit, the Prime Minister said all allies should up defence spending. Priorities for this summit are to strengthen that alliance so that we can face the threats of the future and protect ourselves adequately against them, but also to continue supporting Ukraine. The government has announced a big increase in production of NATO standard artillery shells in the UK. Ukraine needs the tools to push Russia back. Keep is grateful, but wants more. What Ukraine wants is a seat at NATO's table, membership of the club, and why? Because of NATO's mutual defence clause, which means an attack against one member is seen as an attack against all of them. After a ceasefire, says Kiev, that's the way to stop Moscow ever thinking of invading again. But here, NATO allies are divided. divided. Baltic states like Lithuania hosting today's summit border Russia and fear it. Ukraine should join NATO sooner rather than later, they all say. They are sent to the Ukrainians because they are fighting there uh, so that uh, the British, Estonians, Americans don't have to fight with Russia. But the US and Germany are more hesitant. They fear direct conflict with Russia if Ukraine joins NATO anytime soon. This is not a competition. Who is at what moment at uh, what point? The most important thing is that we are all uh, increasing our military support for Ukraine. Tonight, Ukraine's president was given a seat at NATO's table. For dinner, at least. A spat over membership aside, this relationship is close. Katia Adler, BBC News, Vilnius. Speak now to our security correspondent Gordon Carrera, who's in the Ukrainian capital Kiev for us. And Gordon, what will be the reaction in Ukraine to the summit? What does it mean for the war? Well, Ukraine has been knocking at NATO's door for years now, asking to join. And what you heard today was President Zelensky effectively pounding on it, asking to be let in on his way to the summit, saying it would be absurd not to be given a timetable. Now, that would appear to be a way of putting some last-minute pressure on those NATO leaders, but he didn't get what he wanted. There was a step forward, but no absolute commitment. Now, I think Ukraine has been careful not to sound too disappointed or too angry. After all, they need NATO. They need that continued supply of weapons from NATO for their counter-offensive. But weapons are not enough, they believe. They need the kind of security guarantees they can get from NATO. They're worried about ambiguity. One Ukrainian MP said to me, Russia understands the language of force. What they heard from that NATO statement today was the language of hesitation. And so I think the concern is that uh, the weapons and the patience of allies could run dry and that the only thing that will protect Ukraine is not knocking at the door but being let into the NATO club.